Shalom, brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ. I think uh, today we have more people in the auditorium. Uh, I think maybe we are about to reach the target that we are allowed to have at this time. So this is uh, wonderful. And uh, to those who are at home, uh, hello to you all too. During this time, when the world is facing so many problems, many people will probably be feeling, uh, what, what is the future going to be like? It seems that the future is very uncertain. And a lot of people could be nervous, could be troubled, could be fearful. But suppose, suppose we are very confident that the future is really in God's hands and we are in God's hands. I believe that will make a big difference in our feelings and in our thinking and also in our behavior. Isn't that true? And also at this time, because of things that are happening in the world, Many people are also th perhaps thinking that these are actually signs, signs of the times, that the end of the age is actually coming nearer and nearer. And the end of the age will come with the ushering in again of the Lord Jesus Christ during His second coming. So that is about the future. The message that we have today is that God our Lord is the Lord of the beginning and the end. And Jesus himself said that I am the Alpha and the Omega. Alpha is the first uh, alphabet, the Greek alphabet, and Omega is the last Greek alphabet. Jesus said, I am the first and the last, I am the beginning and the end. So, if we know that our God is really the God of the beginning and also the God of the end, we will be able to trust Him and we will feel secure in Him. Now, science, scientists until today are also very, very keen to know the beginning. And a huge amount of money had been spent and is still being sent to send even space props even to the edge of the universe to try to find clues about the beginning of the universe. I guess uh, some of us are aware of that all right? right now. Scientists are hoping to find more clues about the beginning of the universe so that we will understand ourselves better, our world better, and maybe can understand the future better. Now today, the message is going to be quite different in the sense that we are going to look into the Word of God to see a very fundamental and profound teaching in the Bible. But at the same time, I'm going to give a lot of facts and data and information to assure us that what the Bible says can really be trusted. And therefore, uh, especially to those of you at home, you may want to take some paper and a pen or pencil, and uh, you may even want to use your handphone to take uh, some snapshots of the data that I'm going to give to you. And very interestingly, we might be able to find from the information given in the Bible regarding certain dates and certain years to maybe discover what year was Adam created. Isn't it interesting? Really looking into the Bible and look at years and dates and maybe we can find perhaps the exact date the exact year of the creation of Adam 
or maybe roughly around there. We can try that, all right? So uh, you, you, you surely will want to uh, record down the information that I'm going to give to you so that later on you may want to do a, a deeper research and see about the beginning of humankind and the beginning of the earth and the beginning of the universe and that God is actually the creator, the one who began all these things and that this God is the one who is going to end everything. Uh, let us come to, come to God again in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that we can worship you together this morning as your people, as your dear children. We thank you so much for Fetis Park Baptist Church. We thank you so much for your Holy Spirit. We thank you so much for our Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank you so much that you are a Father to us. And right now, as we open to your word again, I really want to pray, O oh God, that you will give us deep confidence in the word of God that your word can be trusted and that we can believe and understand who you are and especially that you hold us and you hold the future, you hold the whole universe in your hands, that we may trust you more, that we may want to worship you, that we may want to love you and that we may want to serve you. For this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. When we open the Bible, the first verse in the Bible, the first word in the Bible, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. What a bold statement. What a declaration. Maybe we just uh, read the Bible all the while and we haven't really noticed what a declaration is this that is found from the very first page of the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and not only the heavens and the earth, but all the living creatures in the earth and all the stars and of course, uh, humankind, Adam and then Eve. And God created all these things for a purpose. And men or humans, being the crown of His creation, was created to have fellowship with God, created to worship God, and to be in according to the purpose of God that God has created humankind. To be with God, to know God, to love God, to worship God. But in Genesis, we also find that sin came into humankind through Adam and Eve, and sin disrupted the plan of God and the purpose of God for humankind and even for creation. But even though that is so, from Genesis until the end of the Bible, we can see that God was seeking to bring back again humankind into the relationship that He has intended for humankind through Jesus Christ, and that is a Christmas story. And that can be seen even from Genesis onward, that God was still, and is still now, in the process of reconciling creation and us to Him, to save us for the present and also for the future. And as we Look into the first chapter of Genesis. On the first day, God said, Let there be light. And there was the light. No light before that, but then God said, Let there be light. And there was the light. Now, this is something that we couldn't understand, all right? How could it happen? But it happened. And the second day, God said, Let there be an expanse between the waters. To separate, to separate the water from the water. Now, I think people in the hundreds of years ago when they read this, they probably couldn't understand. What do you mean by separate the water from the water? Now, we know that the sky is full of water, right? When you look at the clouds, it's actually water. So God created the sky. He separated the water from the water. 
That's the second day. The third day, God said, let the water under the sky be gathered to one place, and that is called the sea, and the dry land be appearing together, and it's called the land, and let the land produce vegetations. So on the third day of creation, you find trees, you find grass, you find uh, vegetations in the earth. And it just happened like that, by the word of God. And on the fourth day, God said, let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to separate the day from the night. So on the fourth day, there was day and night. And so God created the sun, the moon, and the stars. On the fifth day, God said, let the water teem with living creatures and let birds fly above the earth. So God created the sea creatures, and the sky creatures on the fifth day. And then on the sixth day, the last day of creation, God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, and let us make man in our image. So, in six days, God created the stars, the sky, the light, the land, the sea, the animals, the birds, and finally, humankind. He created Adam, and then he created Eve. Isn't that wonderful? But a lot of people will find it very difficult to believe this. And especially in this day and time when we know that science is so amazing, science can do almost anything. Because especially for our children, when they go to school, in the science books, and the teachers and the scientists are telling them that these things that we see around are not created, but they actually come about through evolution. And so we are having this big issue because the science books are telling us that living things come about by a long process of evolution. And maybe some of us, because we believe in science, even though we want to believe in the Bible, we are having problem with this issue. And maybe we are not very sure, we are doubtful. And even though we may want to believe it, we don't know how to tell our children that God is actually the creator. So we are having a big issue here. Maybe we can ask another question. Is evolution possible? Is evolution logical? What do you think? To say that in the beginning, a long, long time ago, maybe billions of years ago, Certain elements like amino acids fused together and life came into being, the very beginning, life form. The very first time life appeared was because some elements somehow got fused together and a spark of life came into being. Now, if that is the case, especially in this day and time with the advancement of technology and science, if that can happen, it probably will be easy for science or scientists to put together this kind of elements and create a spark of life. But it has never been done. It cannot be done. Life cannot just come up like that from some elements that is found around. And evolution would tell us that, okay, a spark of light came into being and a very simple life form appeared at the very beginning. And these life forms, we were told by scientists, they were found in the sea, in the water. And somehow, slowly, slowly, these life forms came into the land. And when these life forms came into the land, they produced lungs. Now, you know the lungs is a very amazing thing, all right? Very amazing thing. So lungs came into being. 
And then feet came into being, into the creatures, and they can walk, they, they can crawl. And some of them evolved into wings, and they can fly. And so evolution continued to evolve, 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 and finally, monkeys. And the monkeys, human beings. Uh, any one of you believe that you are from monkeys? That we are from monkeys, all right? Uh, evolution tells us that we are from monkeys. This is a theory. It has never been proven. And it is possible that for a species, there might be some evolution throughout the years, but to have one species evolve into another species is actually an impossibility. Now, for example, if humankinds that are living in the earth, and some of them decided to go and live high up in the mountains, after a few hundred years, those who live up in the, in the mountains may find that their lungs will evolve into such a way that they can breathe easily, even though the air is very thin up in the mountains. So this is possible. And if some humans decided that they are going to live in the desert, after hundreds of years, their skin color may change and they may evolve in such a way that they adapt themselves to the desert. So these are possible, but to say that a monkey can evolve into a human or some simple life forms can evolve into a complex life form, it takes a lot of faith to believe in that. It is much more easier to believe that God created the, hu the humans, the life on earth, and the universe. And when we talk about the universe, the universe with all the life forms in the earth is a very, very complex thing, making up of many, many systems and components. Now, suppose now, we are taking a bucket here, and in this bucket are 10 numbers, all right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, 10 numbers here in this bucket. And I'm going to mix it all up randomly, and then I throw all these numbers into the sky, or into the air, and let them fall on the ground here. And then I just push them together and make them into one line of numbers. What is the chance that out of these 10 numbers, when they are lying up there, it will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10? You try that, all right? You keep on trying. What is the possibility that just 10 numbers will be able to be in an orderly manner? Would it be one in a million chance? Just 10 numbers, right? Would it be one in a million chance? If we say that, oh, there is one in a million chance that your ex-girlfriend is going to come back to you, what are you saying, all right? One in a million chance, that means no chance, all right? Now, for the possibility, the probability of 10 numbers lying up all together in a line in sequence is 1 out of 3,628,000. Okay, it's not a million chance, all right? It's 1 out of 3,628,000. You have that one chance. So for the universe, with all the complexity, and to put it all together in an orderly way, everything functioning well, what is the chance that this can happen? What is the probability? Now, Dr. Henry Morris, the president of the Institute of Creation Research, he calculated everything together and he came out with the probability. Now, when I say one million, there is a one, and how many zeros after the one? Six, all right. Okay. Six zero is one million. Suppose I say one billion, how many zeros? Nine. Nine. Okay. 
Suppose I say one trillion, how many zeros? Two of, all right? Okay. Now, if I say, what if there is only one of a million chance that your girlfriend will come back to you, you can say, very difficult. If I say there is only one billion of a chance, you will say, forget about it, all right? If I say there is only one trillion of a chance, you say, it is impossible. What is the chance that the universe, until today, is like what it is today, everything functioning properly, that the earth will spin exactly around the sun at the exact degree, and that the earth will be spinning every day at exactly the right spin, and that the oxygen in the earth will be exactly the right amount and that the water will be exactly the, the ozone will be exactly everything exactly what is the chance you have a one here and not two of zero right 110 zero okay so many zero for this universe by chance to come into being now, this is to say that it is absolutely impossible. Now, Charles Darwin was the one who is being known to be the person who come out with the theory of evolution. And especially towards the later part of his life, Charles Darwin said, the impossibility of conceiving that this grand and wondrous universe with our conscious selves, right? Not only the universe so grand and, and wonderful, but even with the self, with all our consciousness like that, arose through chance. He said that the possibility of all these things, the universe coming about by chance is so impossible that this is actually the chief argument for the existence of God. What he is saying is that all this is so impossible that this is actually a strong argument that there is a God. That's what he is saying. But still, I think even up to the, up to the time when he died, he said, whether this is an argument of real value, I have never been able to decide. This is to say that he could not make a decision. Even though he, he came up with the theory of evolution, but when he looked into all this wondrous order of the universe, he said that it's actually a strong argument for creator. But yet, I can't decide. My friends, can you decide today? All right. Are you able to decide with all that we can see with our eyes whether it is more logical to believe in evolution or it is easier to believe in the Creator? Now, when God created during the six days of creation, He created actually a matured earth. And as we Look into the Bible, looking into the dates and the years being given in the Bible, we actually can come to a year that Adam was created. And that year is 6,134 uh, 6, years ago. Adam was created 6,100 years and 34 years ago. Okay, later on we will see whether it's possible to come up with this figure. If that is the case, it means that the first human only appeared about 6,000 years plus ago, right? But then science is telling us that they have fossils of early humans, the hominid fossils, the the oldest fossils is 4.4 million years old. You see, we are having a problem, isn't it? 
Now, if you look into the Bible, we look into the dates and all that, it seems that humans only came into being 6,000 years plus ago. But why is it that science is telling us that they have found fossils of the ancestors of humankind, which are millions of years old? Okay, let us now just take some time. I'm going to do this very quickly, all right? To look into the Bible and see whether this earth, I mean, uh, humans came into the world millions and millions of years ago, or it is roughly about 6,000 plus years ago. In 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 1, all right? You may want to take note of this. It says that in the 400 and 80th year after the Israelites came out of Egypt, in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel, in the month of Zix, the second month, he began to build the temple of the Lord. Now we know when Solomon built the temple, when Solomon became a king, because this is a historical fact. Now, if we know when Solomon became a king and when he built the temple, then we will be able to find out when did the Israelites came out of Egypt, correct? Because it says 480th year. After they came out of Egypt, Solomon built the temple. So we know when Solomon built the temple, that means that now we can know when the Israelites came out of Egypt. Solomon built the temple in 966 BC, and he became a king in 970 BC. If you plus 480 years, to 966, you will be able to come up with a figure of 1446 BC. That is the year the Israelites came out of Egypt. Now, in Exodus chapter 12, verse 40, it says, Now the length of the time that the Israelites' people living in Egypt was 430 years. Since we know when they came out, and since the Bible tells us that they were in Egypt 430 years, then we actually can calculate when, what was the year they went into Egypt, correct? 1446 BC, Israelites came out of Egypt. You add 430 to that, you will come up with the year 1876 BC, the Israelites went into Egypt. Now, in Genesis chapter 47, verse 9, it says, Jacob said to Pharaoh, The years of my pilgrimage are 130. So Jacob was telling Pharaoh when he went into Egypt, all right, when he went into Egypt, he told Pharaoh that I am 130 years old. If that is the case, since we know when Jacob went into Egypt, when the Israelites went into Egypt, now Jacob said that at that time he was 130 years old, that means that we know now when was Jacob born. Correct? So, 1876 BC was when the Israelites went into Egypt, you plus 130, you get 2006 BC, and that was the year Jacob was born. Okay. Now, when you look into Genesis, you see that Adam lived 130 years, and then Seth was born. And when Seth lived 105 years, Enos was born. And when Enos lived 90 years, Kenan, Kenan was born, and you go on and go on and on, until Isaac. When Isaac was 60 years old, Rebekah gave birth to twins, Esau and Jacob. So if you calculate all these years, okay, uh, Adam was this old, and then 
this uh, person was born. Uh, this person, they're all this person born. You calculate the years of this line until Jacob, you will be able to find that when Jacob was born, he was born 2,108 years after Adam was created. Since we know that the time of Adam to Jacob was 2,108 years, and we know when Jacob was born, you add this together and you will find out that Adam was created in 4,114 BC. This year is 2020 AD. 2020 plus 4114 is equal to 6134. And that is the number of years between now and Adam. Okay, uh, I, I, might, I might have miscalculated something. Right? Because, uh, but anyway, uh, it, it's roughly like that, all right? So we know that Adam was created not millions and millions of years ago. So now again, we are having a problem, right? We are having a problem with believing the Bible or believing science. Okay. Now, how do scientists determine whether this fossil is 1,000 years old or 1 million years old? How do they determine whether a rock is a million years old or a billion years of old? They use carbon-14 and other radiometric dating to try to find out how old is this bone or how old is this, uh, uh, this rock. And so they use these elements like carbon-14, potassium-40, argon-40, uranium-238, and lead-206. What they do is they look at what they have now and they measure the amount of that element in that stone or in that bone and when they see that, oh, this is only a little bit left, then they will say that, wow, you know, this bone is very, very old. But if there is still a lot of this left, that means that this bone or this rock is very, very new, not that old. So that is how they measure. But this is very, very inaccurate. If you are, if you are real to yourself, if you are sincere in your observations, scientists will have to conclude that this kind of measurement is very inaccurate. And I don't understand all these things, but if you look into certain articles being written, there are a lot of proof to see that this is a very inaccurate kind of measurement. And then, there are many evidences being shown that certain rocks that were created not too long ago by the explosion of a, a volcano, uh, maybe just 10 years ago or 20 years ago, when they measured this rock, which is very new, they found out that this rock is actually millions and millions of years old. So there has been a lot of error in this kind of measurement. And also, it takes the assumption that there is a belief that, okay, so this rock only a little bit of this element left, that means that it has been a long, long time. But this takes into consideration that the diminishing on a constant way throughout all the years. And there is proof that certain things that have happened that has caused the elements to disappear faster or slower. So this measurement is absolutely inaccurate. Another thing we need to take in, bear in mind is that when God created the earth, He created the matured earth. Now, what does it mean? Is that on the sixth day, when Adam was created, on the sixth day, when Adam was created, if you take Adam and examine his bond, his bone is not one day old bone. It's not the bone of a baby. It is the bone of a man. Maybe at that time uh, it is 20 year old man or 30 year old man. So the bone of Adam was a matured bone. And the tree 
that Adam was sitting under that was created only three days ago, that tree, you measure it, it could be a hundred year old tree. So when God created, He created, boom, everything is mature. Adam was a man, and the tree is a fruit-bearing tree, and that tree is a mature tree. And another thing that we need to bear in mind is that in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, it says, Now the earth was formless and empty, darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Now this is to say that before there was day and night, the earth was already there in a formless, in an empty manner. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Now this is to say that before there is time, before there is month and year, the earth was already in existence. And so this period of time, when the earth was formless and empty, could be million of years, could be billion of years. Because day and night was not created yet. So therefore, if you say that you look into the earth and you actually measure correctly and the earth is million and million of years old, actually there is nothing wrong. It doesn't conflict with the Bible. Therefore, many scientists today, after all this observation and looking into the probability of the universe, everything functioning orderly, they come to a conclusion that actually when you look into the universe, it points to the fact that there is a creator. Many of these scientists do not want to say that this creator is God, and they just say there is an intelligence behind the universe. But many scientists actually are bold enough to say that there must be a God, and there must be a creation, there must be a creator. Now I have a list of uh, scientists here. These scientists are alive today, all right? They are today's scientists. Uh, I, I only take selected few, key few, all right? Uh, the few of space uh, physicists, uh, astrophysicists, uh, paleontologists, uh, geophysics, electromagnetics, uh, cosmologists, uh, astronomy. And I only take these few that are uh, related to the universe. And I only take one of the scientists of each few. And these scientists are concluding that the universe is a creation of God. And I have another list. So you, now I have nuclear physics, uh, microbiology, uh, radiation chemistry. So these scientists are they are today, living today, and they are declaring that they believe in the Creator God. My friend, would you believe in God today? Would you believe what the Bible says, that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and that life came from God? And Psalm 19 verse 1 and 2 says that the heavens are declaring the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of His hands, and day after day they pour forth speech, night after night they displace knowledge. This is to say that the creation of God is telling us that it cannot be there just by chance. They are there because of God, there is a Creator. When we look at the stars, when we look at ourselves, when we look at nature, let us be able to see that nature is telling us, and not just telling us, but declaring to us the glory of God, that there is a Creator, that there is a God behind the universe. Will you be willing? Will you be ready to believe in this? Because if you can believe in this, if you can have confidence that this is true, 
then your whole life will be changed and you will put your trust in Jesus and you will be aligned back again into the purpose of God for the universe and for you. And we will be confident and assured of our future because this mighty Creator God is the God of the future as well as the present and of the past. I would like to encourage all of us here to declare every day two things. All right? I'm coming to the close of the message now. After listening to all this, what the Bible has to say about God and about creation, I'm backing it up with uh, many information. Let us be able to come to this conclusion of two things and let us declare these two things every day for 62 days. Why I'm saying 62 days? Because it takes 62 days for us to form a habit. Now, if you do 30 days and then you miss out a few days, then you have to start all over again. I would like to encourage us all, let us do it for 62 days from today onward to declare these two things every day, maybe in the morning. First of all, to declare that our God is the mighty creator God. Okay? Every day now, for 62 days, declare, God, you are the mighty creator God, and you hold the future in your hands. And because you are the mighty creator God, I am going to trust you. And I'm going to worship you because God created us to worship him that we will adore Him, we will fellowship with Him. Alright? If we declare, God, you are the mighty Creator God, I will trust you and I will worship you. That is going to be amazing, awesome, right? And make it into a habit. The second thing that we need to declare is that since we believe that God is the mighty Creator God, who are we? We are His creation, we are His masterpieces. I am your masterpiece wonderfully made, everything working well, orderly, not by chance, but by the hand of God. I am your masterpiece. And not only that, you have aligned me back to you through Jesus Christ and you now have called me and you have embraced me as your son or your daughter. And because I am now your son, I'm going to love you I'm going to love you deeply. And because now you have called me to be your son, to be joint heir with Jesus Christ, I am now in partnership with what you are doing for eternity. You have a purpose for the universe. You have a purpose for this church. And I'm now part of this church. I have a purpose in this world. Now, many of you, during these last few weeks, you have been trying to discover what is your destiny, all right? You have a destiny in God's hands. You have a purpose. Because I am the masterpiece of the mighty creator God, I am His Son, I will serve Him because I want to be aligned to His purpose. Now, I find great joy to know many of you even in the last week, I have seen some of you, and I, even though I have not seen, I know that many of you have really been loving God deeply, and you have been serving God passionately uh, with all the needs of certain families, of three families, loved one who has passed away, and how you give of yourself out of your love, and how you serve others because you serve God, it is so wonderful to see these things happening. And why is it happening? Because you realize that you are a son of the mighty God, you are a daughter of the mighty God, and you are his masterpiece. This is, this is just absolutely amazing. If all of us here and at home, for now 62 days, you keep on declaring every day, God you are the mighty creator, God. I will trust you. I will worship you. Oh, Lord, I'm your masterpiece. I'm your son. Uh, I would say I'm your son. You would say you are your daughter, all right, if you are, if you are a, a, a sister. And I will love you. Every day I say to God, I will love you. And I will serve you 
Now, if we keep on saying this every day for 62 days, after 62 days, I think we are going to be changed, all right? We are going to really feel, know, and experience God as a mighty creator, God. And we will trust Him. We really will trust Him for our future. future. Even though all the things are happening in the world today, we are not going to be afraid. And we will want to worship Him, not only on Sunday, worship Him every day. And then we know who we are, all right? Now, also the life design, you're supposed to know who you are. Who are you, all right? A masterpiece of God. I am His Son. And I will love you. I will serve you. Now, my friends, I'm going to end now, all right? But let us not end and that's it, all right? Let's not wait till tonight. How about we start now? Declare. Declare now to yourself, all right, before God, that you believe that God is a mighty creator, God, and you will trust Him and you will worship Him. And then you declare that you are His masterpiece, you are His son or daughter, and you will love Him and serve Him. I'd like us all to stand together. And you at home also, please stand. I want you to declare, all right? I, I, will, I will say first and you follow me, all right? Really declare with confidence, with faith, all right? All right, let's do it together. Oh God, you are the mighty creator God. I will trust you and worship you. Oh God, I am your masterpiece. I am your son. I will love you and serve you. Heavenly Father, how wonderful is it to be able to make this declaration, to really believe it. And when we believe it, we will feel it. And when we believe it and feel it, we will experience it. Surely, Lord, because you are real, we are going to feel it. We are going to experience it. We are going to experience your love and your grace and your power in our lives. And I pray, Father, that you will help brothers and sisters of Fettis Park Baptist Church and all those who are listening to this message, that for the next 62 days, we will make this declaration every day, and that in the end, it will become part of us. Oh Lord, thank you for your mercy, thank you for your grace, and thank you for this day, and thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. Okay, I think we are having a closing song. Yeah.